Hi, it's Dorothy Ghani with Scrapbooking Quebec. This month, my layout share is a two-part series. This is video two, and I'm going to be sharing 10 pages of the 35 I created with a kit I put together at the beginning of March 2022. And part one included 25 pages, and that video is linked below. This video, part two, is basically a follow-up to a stash collection building video I posted on YouTube a while back. It was a tips and tricks video titled Paper Pattern Overload and How to Fix It. And in that video, I took a collection that I found difficult to use and I made it more user friendly by adding material from my stash. And I will link up that video below as well. So here is the collection, what it looked like before. Basically, a picked over bungalow lane collection by Paige Evans with a lot of old prints left. I turned it into this, and I'm a bit of a pattern paper wimp, so I found version two more approachable and more user friendly. And it worked because I created 10 pages with it that I absolutely love. So let's have a look at these layouts, and then what I'll do is show you what I have left from this collection and let you know my plans for the leftovers. As usual, there will be still shots at the end of this video, so let's get started and this first layout here is a neat and tidy grid it is a victoria marie inspiration you can see that in the bottom of the grid i created a pocket and i used a die collection from the scrapbook.com that was in my kit this month and i have all of these leaves popping out of it there is the coordinating page it's super simple just a wide band of paper, one photo, and one embellishment cluster. So I used the paper from this Bungalow Lane collection along with some wood grains from my stash. I ended up using those multicolored alphas, which is a bonus because I find them difficult to use, and I used the die cuts from Bungalow Lane. Here's another page I created, and this one I cut the papers up into a bunch of squares. And I can say that working with a collection that is challenging for me, forced me to explore different ways to create with it. And what I found was by cutting up these bold pattern papers that I found difficult to use, I created my own pattern paper. And of course, I was relying a lot on white space. So there you have it, two more pages. And I am actually very thrilled with it. And again, a lot of wood grain. I added a lot of wood grain to this collection. So here are the next page. It's this one here. Once again, it is a Victoria Marie inspiration. I'm pointing out the alphas there because those dies, those alpha dies from the scrapbook.com were in my kit as well this month. And I tried them out. I spoke more about them in the first video. So if you want to hear my review on the scrapbook.com dies, I talk more about it in that video. And I'm just showing you them right now. They are cute. I did like the look of them. They were just a bit fussy to adhere because they are quite thin or quite narrow or whatever you want to call it. Anyway, you can see the page too. Once again, a super simple page, basically repeating the patterns and making something simple to go with a more complicated design, which is typically what I do when I stretch a single page layout into a double page one. This one here was probably the one I had the most trouble with. I think it was because of the colors. These colors I don't typically work with. The orange with the green, I didn't particularly like that uh, pattern paper with the half circle. So I found this one quite difficult. And on top of it, I added paint splatters, which is not something I ever do. Nevertheless, it has grown on me and it will be going in my album. And once again, I use the ephemera from this collection. I use those multicolor alphas, which are that which is a big plus for me because I find multicolored alphas difficult to use. Now we're down to the last two pages. And if you are here, you are seeing the layout that will be on YouTube tomorrow. That's the layout I create for a punched out Thursday that goes live tomorrow. And it was a Paige Evans inspiration. I talked more about it in that video. And I'm showing you the coordinating page, very simple, that I created to go with it. So that is it. Those are the 10 pages I created with my beefed up version of the Paige Evans Bungalow Lane Collection, and I am absolutely thrilled with it, even the one I liked less. 
this is a reminder what I started with. And this is what I have left. So what I'm going to do is go through this. I have cardstock, one 12 by 12 sheet of paper, a bunch of scraps, and some embellishments. So here it is on my desk, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with it. So I only have one piece of 12 by 12 paper, and it really isn't my favorite. And I don't have enough here to put back in my stash as a collection, and I store my material by collection. So the solid cardstock that I added to this kit, I am going to take that out. That is going to go back in my stash. So that I have a piece of 12 by 12 paper, printed paper, and I have a bunch of scraps. Now, I typically keep my scraps in order with collections. So what I'm showing you right now are all of the scraps that are basically good size chunks or 12 inch chunks. For me, that's what I define as scraps as usable. So I keep all of those together and I even have another probably a little over a half sheet of that same printed paper, the same 12 by 12 sheet I have left. So as far as I'm concerned, that is worthy to keep. I also have kept some punched out pieces. I punched out these pieces for pages that I created, and these were simply the leftovers. Some of them are die cuts, some of them are border strips. So I'm going to put that in a usable pile as well. Now this category are just simply scraps of paper. As far as I'm concerned, that is annoying. If I have a full collection, I would keep them in case I wanted to punch them out, but I don't have a full collection. So that's going in the recycling. As for the wood grain, that's in a category all on its own. That's going back in my stash. I save all my wood grain. So here are what I have left for embellishments. I still have a lot of stickers from this collection, so that's going in the worthy pile. I have these alphas. I had trouble using them, but there are a few vowels left. I think one A, one E. And I also have some cut apart sheets from this collection. That was a piece of paper that was cut up. I certainly used some of them, but that's going in my punched out category of scraps. Those are wood veneer leaves. I don't like wood veneer, but there are a lot of them there. And those were little rubbery buttons. I didn't use those. I didn't particularly like them. And I also had some cut apart tags. So all of that is in my worthy pile. And I'm now showing you some die cuts. That was my favorite part of this collection. Those were absolutely gorgeous. And I had bought two packs and clearly I had bought too many because I still have quite a bit left. So with that worthy pile, I didn't particularly like this collection. I didn't dislike it. I found it hard to use. And the fact is I made lots of pages with it earlier in the year or basically about, I don't know, last fall, I think. And then I came back, resuscitated the collection and made another 10 pages. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm satisfied. And with only one printed paper left and all of the accessories, what I'm going to do is give it to a friend. I'm going to be scrapbooking with a few friends in a few weeks. I'm going to bring it there and ask if anyone would like to create something with it. I'm just tired of seeing it. And if nobody wants it, it will all go probably in the recycling, except for maybe that 12 by 12 piece of paper in which I will put it in a pile of paper that I have that doesn't belong in any collections. It's just divided by manufacturer, and that pile is about four inches thick. Aside from that, everything in my scrap room is divided by collection. So as you can see, I'm showing you still shots for all of the layouts. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out part one of this layout share series. If you haven't already, it is a link below. Tomorrow, I'm going to be back with a layout process video. And April 1st, there will be my kit share video. Thank you so much for watching. I'd greatly appreciate a thumbs up. If you are a subscriber, thank you very much. If you haven't subscribed, I would be thrilled if you did. Have a fantastic day and I'll be back tomorrow. Bye-bye.